Conventional wisdom says it's probably not a good idea to upset your fan base, but I'm getting real tired of seeing this shit. On this episode of The Count Out, we're talking about the worst types of pro wrestling fans. My name's Michael. Welcome to Suplex. Number one, smelly fans. Wash your ass. Ooh. Your chances of running into somebody who hasn't showered in the last 48 hours is high. I don't know if it's as high as hearing this at a wrestling show, Rabbit. but it's pretty high. I know we all have different home circumstances and things going on, but before you go out and you be amongst people, shower. I don't think it's that difficult, right? I know some of us are just coming from work. Maybe keep some deodorant in your car. Maybe use some of that. Maybe use some of that deodorant ever. And look, I know there are going to be people out there. Well, I've been to wrestling shows all my life and I've never come across the stinky fan. To those people, I say, I have some bad news. So please, if you're attending pro wrestling at all, just make sure you do us a favor and you take that show. Number two, creepy fans. If you've spent more than one minute in the social media spaces of pro wrestling, you've seen this type of fan. I'm talking about the thirsty fan, the weird fan, the fan who is making these comments to most of the time predominantly female wrestlers. It's disgusting. I don't know if you know this, but those accounts belong to real people, real people who just open their cell phone and see absolutely horrific things that you've typed about them. Whether it's objectifying their bodies or bringing up some traumatic experience in their life like I saw this week on my own TikTok, I posted this video of an interaction I had with Soraya at the AEW show in Lexington this week. Great work out there, great work. I don't know what I said. And yes, I understand it's my fault asking a question to the internet, but somebody responded with this. These are incredibly gross things to say to real people. I understand that you may think you have a parasocial relationship because you read about these folks all the time, but it doesn't mean you actually know them. So please stop commenting weird sh number three money mark i think capitalism has rotted a lot of people's brains and i think you look at the social media spaces of pro wrestling to see what i'm saying i'm so tired of hearing people talk about how much money companies are making and caring like that matters like that matters to why one pro wrestling company is better than another pro wrestling company i'm all for debate so much so that we have our own debate show here on the channel. Make sure you check out Do We Have Heat. Plug it! The discourse in pro wrestling being mainly concerned about money, I think people have forgotten that some people watch art for the sake of art and not for the amount of money that art makes. I understand in media we have talked about like box office numbers and things like that, but that's not what predominantly drives conversations around film. So why do we let it predominantly drive the conversations around pro wrestling? And we've lost our way in pro wrestling because we're not talking about the art of pro wrestling. And pro wrestling is most certainly an art. We're talking about the business of pro wrestling, talking about money that we're not making and using that to justify our feelings about pro wrestling. So I've come up with a solution. What I'm suggesting is pro wrestling re-education camp. We're gonna force people to watch old TNA clips because we're still not sure how TNA was making money at the time and how they've been on the air for 20 years, but we're gonna make them watch old TNA clips so they can't talk about how many seats were sold because the impact zone was part of your Universal Studios package. So if you went to Universal Studios theme park in Florida, you could go see TNA. You need to get out of the hot, hot Florida sun for a bit. Sure, we here at Universal Studios are glad to do it. You are going to have to watch Jeff Jarrett wrestle though, enjoy. And you won't be able to talk about television rights deals because I've never seen a TNA rights deal. How does TNA make money? Are they being paid? They're being paid to be on television. How much money are they being paid? Nobody knows. It's a secret. Number four, botch watchers. Now don't get me wrong, I love watching botch mania as much as the next guy, but if you're watching pro wrestling to call out botches and you're not playing old Nintendo tunes in the back, I don't wanna talk to you. These botch watchers mainly hang out on TikTok. Anytime these eagle-eyed viewers see a botch, they clip it, throw it on the internet, and put their caption of choice. If the person hates AEW, they'll say, Oh, we're the best wrestle. And on the other side, on WWE, they say, ooh, you think this is wrestling? Yeah, it's really dumb on both sides. And that's, hold on, real quick, hold on, real quick. We've gone through this list, but I just want to take a time out and say that these people exist on both sides. If you're someone who only watches AEW, they exist on your side. If you're somebody who only watches WWE, 
they exist on your side. If you're somebody who watches every piece of wrestling and loves it, they're still on your side. These types of people exist in every single wrestling space. Anyways, back to the botch watchers. I'm sure the wrestlers really appreciate this. Um, I can't tell you how appreciative I would be if every time I made a mistake at my work, somebody posted on the internet. I'm sure it would've got great engagement that time I replied all to the company um, of about 25,000 people, yeah. Still think about it. Number five, podcast parrots. There is so much pro wrestling going on right now. Sometimes I just have to listen to a podcast to get caught up on a lot of it. Now, podcasts are great. Podcasts can be fun, but podcasts can also be misleading. Look, I don't fault people for getting some of their ideas from professional wrestling pundits and podcasters. That's more than fine. But these people are the people who repeat word for word, bar for bar, what other people say, so much so that they're picking up on their jargon. You know who I'm talking about, Jim Cornette fans. It is insane. That's not how people talk. You are talking like somebody who is being an entertainer and then bringing that into the real world. And this is pulling back the curtain a little bit. When I used to direct Ohio Valley Wrestling, I worked with Jim Cornette towards the end of my time. He's not that bad. He's not like he is on the shows in real life. Jim Cornette seems to be playing a character. Now, Jim might have changed a lot since I've sto spoke to him last, but it seems like the guy who's always been here to try to get heat as a heel manager might still be trying to get heat. And I'm not saying don't listen to podcasts, but I am saying maybe just put your own spin on it. Maybe just think about the things other people are saying and make up your own decision on them. All content. Number six, chirpers. Look, I understand the idea of hating something you're not watching. The first time I saw Power Slap, I said, hmm, this seems like an immediate negative thing for society as a whole, and this is bad. And then I turned the show off, and I never watched it or thought about it again. I then did not go to the official TikTok page, Twitter, subreddits for Power Slap, and tell everyone how bad it is and how wrong I think they are for liking it. For some reason in the pro wrestling space in the last five years, this has become a full-blown epidemic. I don't understand what people are getting from tweeting something or writing a comment and just saying blank sucks. So as the self-proclaimed therapist of pro wrestling social media, I asked them, I said, why do you feel that way? And they usually give me some flimsy response. I say, what have you not liked in the last couple of episodes? And they say, well, I don't watch it. How do you as a person take in information and view it and create your own worldview if you're not watching something? You can't. And I'm not saying you have to have an opinion on everything that's going on in the world. That would be ridiculous. There are gonna be some things on this planet that are not made for you. You are not the target demo for every single thing on this planet. That also needs to be met with the idea that you understand that you don't need to jump into everything that you're not a part of and insert yourself. When you go and you go to places and you start inserting your feelings when they're not asked for, you kind of sound like a particular WWE Hall of Famer. And yes, I understand that I could alienate more people by saying that, but I'm trying to cultivate a community of people I would like to be around. Number seven, bad banter. I know we just talked about chirpers on the internet, but this, this is something I would like to see changed in professional wrestling fandom. I want people to have more than one joke. I'm so tired of people saying, WWE is a baby show for baby. And on the other side, AEW attendance lol. It's tired banter. I'm absolutely sick of seeing it. We need to get more than one joke. If you guys want to keep being tribalist about two wrestling companies who don't know you exist, one of them is a publicly funded billion dollar organization currently being investigated by the federal government. And you're all notice me senpai in their comment section. And the other side is run by a wrestle dork who, in all fairness, probably will see your comment, but that does not make it right. Stop doing this stuff. And I hope this video right here can put an end to those two talking points. Let's go through both of them. WWE is a family oriented show for children and family. Yes, they do have a younger viewing audience and that's a good thing because this is true. Younger pro wrestling fans do in fact grow up sometimes to be older pro wrestling fans. You need, as AEW, WWE, to bring in families, to bring in kids at a young age, because when you get older, you like nostalgia. You like things that you grew up with. You come back to wrestling. That's a good thing for pro wrestling. Pro wrestling needs something that you can put 
out in the mass media and people say, oh yeah, pro wrestling, that's, that's something I know about. That's WWE and that's a good thing. Now, as for AEW's ticket sales, AEW is the second largest pro wrestling company in the world. What they're doing is fine. I don't understand why you think AEW would be competing with WWE off the bat. I know there was a lot of bad faith takes from AEW fans at the start saying AEW is going to overtake WWE. If you thought that, you do not have a functioning brain. And I mean that. Now, having said that, AEW is never going to be on the level of WWE. And I don't know if Tony Khan has not made it apparent for you, but AEW is for absolute wrestling nerds. He even put out a shirt that says AEW is for the sickos. You can say what you want about Tony Khan, but you have to say he knows his target demographic. And that target demographic has made him the second largest wrestling promotion in the world. AEW is not going to replace WWE. But guess what? Second place is pretty damn good. Look, if you made it this far in the video, I think we need to end this on a positive note. So I want to take some time and talk about the really good fans in professional wrestling, the fun ones, the ones that I want in my section when I go. And the first one I want to talk about is the persons who are always up for a chant. You start a chant, they start a chant. Whoever gets it going. I want people to be loud. Pro. I always want people in my section who are coming to wrestling to have a good time. I don't want somebody who's going to sit there and critique the matches quietly. You're at live pro wrestling. You need to be loud. Other fans I like to see at pro wrestling are funny signed people. I always love a good sign. Good sign. It's the hallmark of pro wrestling. I grew up in the Attitude Era and the signs were everywhere. They were not always good signs. Sometimes they were downright bad signs uh, but i love somebody who has a funny sign there's like this running bit on aew that i actually enjoy where people will bring signs that talk about the world of like video games and stuff like that and there seems to be this ongoing debate online via the signs in aew and i enjoy that i think that's funny i like inside jokes and Bill Goldberg eats corn the long way. And there you have it. That's the countdown of the worst types of pro wrestling fans that you can find today. I really hope when we make this video five years from now, we can say some of these types of pro wrestling fans are no longer in the space because they've all changed and we don't do that stuff anymore. Uh, my, ho my hopes aren't high, but my hopes are there. So if you don't like people correcting you over pro wrestling, those type of fans are pretty bad too. Uh, you should definitely not check out our show, You Mark, the pro wrestling game show where corrections are the answers. That's here on Suplex Media. New episodes filming soon. Be on the lookout. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see this and everything that we post here at Suplex Media. Let me know in the comments what you think. What are the worst types of pro wrestling fans you've interacted with? Let me know in the comments and maybe we'll use them in a future video. Remember, most importantly, pro wrestling is predetermined. Your life isn't. Go do something great today. We'll see you next time.